Yes, ciao from Pietro, ciao from uh, the limited edition. We're live today as well. We're blessed to be live with uh, another inspiring independent watchmaker. As you know, this is the independence. We very humbly try to bring the best of content from the world of independent watchmaking. We do this on a weekly basis, sometimes on a daily basis. We do our very best to uh, unleash, to illustrate and to unveil the very best of artisan uh, craftsmanship applied in independent watchmaking. We always have a guest and we have a, I have a co-host. I'm blessed with having one of the best experts in the world of uh, independent watchmaking, Johnny McElleron, our editor, as my co-host of The Independent. And today, Johnny, is uh, another of one of those great days where we can introduce, is not new to our show, to the independents, uh, Gauthier Massonneau, uh, a very charismatic, inspiring young watchmaker that has come uh, across with uh, one of the most surprising and uh, inspiring, again, uh, watch brands that we've seen arising in the last few years. Bon matin, Pietro Monami. Yes, it's uh, excellent to uh, see you and to uh, join you here uh, for another uh, edition of the independents. And yeah, man, we're talking about uh, this uh, incredible uh, startup company that r really, over the last five years or so, has uh, arrived and left such an impact on the, the 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 independent watchmaking landscape with its extraordinary uh, concept of the of the how they reinterpreted the time display, and it is. Uh, just it, it, it's mechanically complex and sophisticated and aesthetically enchanting. Uh, I am a huge fan of this uh, Parisian based company Trilobe, and uh, so can't wait to uh, to get talking about uh, some of these amazing watches. Here we go. So we shall introduce now our guest, Gauthier Massonneau. I guess directly from Paris. I may be wrong, but uh, it should be sitting in Paris. Nice to see you, Gauthier. <laughs> Hello, Pietro. Hello, Johnny. How are you? Excellent, Gauthier. Thank you for joining us. Good All is you. good. And I, I've good. seen I've seen the Tintin Rakam Le Rouge in the background of Johnny. That's where you picked up your excellent French. That's... <laughs> Yes, well, I, I look. This is we my homework. Ah, cool, cool. <laughs> and they and they got there, and they got there apparently. <laughs> ça me donne une idée. On devrait faire ça en français un jour pour notre écouteur en langue française aussi. Maybe, maybe we should switch to French at some point. Absolutely. That's why we'll parle lentement. Gauthier, it's uh, great to see you. We uh, we had the pleasure to have you uh, here on this space in the past to uh, share with us the incredible journey you have had over the last few years uh, from uh, conception and from an idea to a reality that Trilob is now. Uh, you're dealing with very different uh, issues you were dealing at the beginning when you were trying to establish your new way of interpreting time. And now you are obviously dealing with the issues of uh, getting organized, getting structured, getting uh, the brand to become a brand. Is brand a word that you like? So tell us where you are in the development of this idea of yours. Completely. No, thanks again for having me. Um, uh, as, you, as you said, uh, we, we launched Trilob five years ago, a bit more than five years ago now. So we are... Uh, I don't know what's what's the good timeline for 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 what brand, but I, I, it seems to be like a human being. So you know, we're we're not a baby anymore, but we start a, not a toddler anymore. But uh, um, we start to grow, and, um, and 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 to answer your question, yes, we we clearly identify ourselves as um, as as a as a house, as a maison, as a brand. That's that's something very very important for us. Um, and uh, and that's the, the the avenue we are we are going on, and and today I mean for the last two three years the big challenge challenge for us has been to to organize ourselves to, to to build this uh, to build the production especially and to follow uh, part of the demand at least, and uh, that has been um, quite challenging. But we will talk about it I guess uh, during the during the show. 
uh, and notably it got into you know um, well taking our envol as we say in France so uh, flying with our own wings uh, in terms of, uh, of, of, of watchmaking we, we started working with partners um, in Switzerland and now we're doing uh, we're doing our stuff in house in Paris we have our our, our workshop with our watchmakers and so on. So it's it's an exciting journey. Yeah, we'll and we'll talk about that because that's a very important part. But uh, Johnny Gautier comes across always, uh, and for a creative person like him with a creative background, as uh, the most realistic and humble uh, gentleman. But what happened to Trilobe in the last few years is actually a little bit. Um, how can I say, extraordinary. The, the demand that uh, Gauthier just mentioned quite quickly there uh, has been, I think, uh, Gauthier, you'll tell me, uh, but uh, uh, far over the initial uh, expectations and what even we kind of, uh, as, and we love, we've seen a lot of independent watchmaking exploding, but for Trilobe, it's been really uh, somewhat um, amazing. So, uh, Johnny, this, this, this was apparent for the last three years especially. Uh, no doubt about it. Well, I guess whenever you see what Trilobe do, uh, that it is, uh, it, it's so different. It's so unconventional. It breaks with the the rules, if you like, the, the rules of convention that uh, tell you how a watch should, what a watch should be. And each one of the collections so far have a very distinct personality there's a little bit of flamboyance and a little bit of a, a, a lot not a little bit there's a lot of expression and mm -hmm. uh uh you know, architecture the 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 the, the beauty of, of architecture and you know while we're talking here let's just we'll start off with the 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 une folle journée which is this extraordinary three-dimensional display of rotating rings which display the seconds the minutes and the hours and so there's always movement going on underneath that domed crystal and it, it's it, it the whole concept is devised around a, a movement that has been developed exclusively for a three lobe to enable them to optimize across their collections optimize this uh, method of displaying time unconventionally. And uh, like, I, I know what you're saying, Pietro, whenever you say that we, uh, so the success has been uh, un unprecedented and unexpected, but when you see these watches, you realize that you're looking at something very, very different. I think and it's not only, sorry, it's not only the watches, but it's the whole structure of the company. And you feel when you're walking into three low this is, this is a, a happening thing. There's a lot of energy going on here. And it's no surprise to me, really, that collectors are falling in love with these watches as soon as they see them. I think I saw Trilob the first time in 2019 at Dubai Watch Week, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And even I, we were well into the independence in those days. And even I found it, you know, somehow very revolutionary in the sense that we were used to independent watchmakers that would try to surprise with the level of the finishing or with the complexity of the mechanics. But here, Gautier, you have added from the beginning also a different interpretation of how you showcase, showcase time, and which is a risky business to be in. Was that a an, non-negotiable an from the beginning in the concept you had in mind? <laughs> Yes, that's really one of the key pillars of our, of, our, of our pyramid, I would say, in the sense that, you know, you have many great people that do super cool watches with two hands, three hands, one hand. Um, I do not have the pretension to, to do better watches than, um, I'm not going to give brand names, but we all know yeah. them, um, I, you know, I'm not going to do better than them. Uh, what I think I can do is, of course, take the best of them in terms of finishing, in terms, of, as you said, in terms of mechanics and so on. But but bring what's 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 the most important for me is bring creativity, is bring something very different. Uh, that means that you know, ten meters away, when you see the watch, of course, you cannot read time on the watch ten meters away, but you, when you see a trilogue watch, you know exactly what it is. 
and that's that's very important for me and and that uh i think is the is the key pillar of our, of, our, of our brand is that we uh, we it's it's a, it's a, it's some sort of a manifesto that tells uh, that tells people that yeah you can you can have fun in creating time pieces that do tell time of course but in very different ways uh, some of them can be um, more eccentric as the one you're, you're showing here a bit more exuberant with the with the three titanium rings uh, in the sky and some will be still very different uh, but at the same time very classic um, almost with a vintage look I'm thinking of our other collection uh, uh, Les Nuits Fantastiques or A Fantastic Night in, in oh, What are you wearing the one where you wearing uh, today I'm, probably? I'm wearing Les Matino that's my uh, that's my engagement watch actually uh, my, my wife gently offered me my own watch. <laughs> Very kind. <laughs> that's that's a great story. That's a great story. And, and for, yes. for those, as, as you as you explain your inspiration, uh, Gautier, for those that couldn't see yet the the other interview that we have on this channel, actually, yes. if you're interested, you'll see the link uh, as we finish this uh, this show to the mm -hmm. first interview we had with Gautier in the past. But uh, your background is very much on the on the creative side. Uh, from a, from a family side, I would say, because my uh, my parents are architects, so I grew up in in this environment of of playing with things, of of uh, playing with shapes, and 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 always, uh, you know, I I've always liked to dismantle stuff. You know, I had a grandfather with the Marklin German Marklin uh, little trains, and you know, I always enjoyed dismantling it completely, and then you reassemble. And of course, it it doesn't work, but um, I, it's I would say this mix of you know loving hardware i would never been able to start a software company that's that's not something i, I like I, I like you know touch to touch stuff to, to to play with stuff that you can physically touch um and at the same time uh yeah growing up in this environment where you know you can you can invent things you can be creative and that's that's how you have fun and, I, and I'm, I'm not Swiss, and I'm not a watchmaker by formation. So are you that's, also that's very important? <laughs> I I dare to say that obviously you're on the younger on the younger side uh, of the scale in terms of in terms of age. And uh, uh, as the world is going completely, uh, you know, AI and virtual, uh, you know, in so many ways, um, do you feel part of the um, compelling uh, force? driving you coming with the fact that you know we're humans we still love human things and and uh, mm. horology is one of those uh, ancestral arts yeah I'm, I'm i'm very convinced of that you know you take you take uh, something super super complex and super simple at the same time which is uh, something very important in france which is bread a good baguette yeah very important um, quite, in Milan quite, as well. I can tell you quite that. Quite hard to find elsewhere, but yeah. um, but um, you know, of course, it's in the end, it's flour, it's um, uh, it's water, and it's uh, wheat. Is that wheat the right word in English? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you, you know, it's just a recipe. You could you can do that, and you can buy that in supermarket stuff made by machines, but the real good ones will be made by human and, and you will want them to be made by human. I think that's the same for, for art. You could imagine robots, um, you know, playing, uh, playing a comedy, but maybe you will not see the difference, but you want to have this human touch. Uh, and and uh, I think that's the same in the globally in the luxury industry and most especially in, in the watch industry. You want to have uh, people, real people who create things. And you have, um, coming back to Trilob, you have come a long way. Of course, you have used, uh, you have leveraged on the Swiss uh, ecosystem to be able to start your journey. Completely. Please have in mind that, you know, there is a strong French identity in the design initially. And uh, you tell me where else for the future and what's happening in, in, in that respect. Is, is there a route to Paris that is... Uh, it's kind of uh, going on in terms of the development of the brand. Yes, yes, more and more. Um, we, we, we are growing our, our operations more and more. We're about 20 people now in Paris. Um, we, of course, uh, you cannot make uh, a watch without uh, involving our, our Swiss friends because notably the, 
the spiral part can only go from there. Um, but more and more, we try to um, to see how we can. Uh, you know, we. It's not. Uh, I, I would turn it the other way around. We're we're in Paris. We're not we're not in Paris just to for seeing uh, Cocorico. We are very proud of being French and, and so on. But that's not the point. Um, but as I say, usually is that we like to do things at home and. You know, home happens to be to be in Paris, actually. So it's just that logically, um, we had to to grow this company in this place because that, that's our place of inspiration for the creativity. That's that's a place of talent as well for watchmakers. We we have extremely talented watchmakers that uh, are based uh, in Paris that were educated in in, in France uh, and and. And it's also interesting for us to... Well, notably, sorry to, to cut you there, yeah, but obviously it's... only by thinking about the school of watchmaking in Besançon in the south of France, uh, for example, there is a there is a strong and heavy uh, watchmaking tradition uh, in, yeah. in France, you know, never mind, of course, then what happened with uh, what happened in Switzerland. No, no, complete, completely. I mean, uh, again, uh, watchmaking was, was born in, uh, in London and in Paris initially, so it makes sense that... Uh, that uh, which making uh, can happen there again, um, and we have good schools in in Besançon, as you said, in uh, in Paris uh, uh, itself, uh, in Fougères in, in Brittany, and so um, so yeah, that's that's clearly a route we're following. Again, not for 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 being proud of doing that, uh, just for the sake of doing that, but because we want to do it at home. And because the the message we carried since the beginning has has always been a, a, a message of sincerity, uh, and and to us for us being sincere here is to say yeah well that's that's our kitchen is here we have nothing to hide, uh, and on on the contrary it's it's cool and and, and we are creating something that you know there, there has not been uh, since since Brigue, there has not been a, a high watchmaking workshop in Paris uh, establishing a brand so so it's a um, it's it's it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity in, in it's, that it's sense. It's super cool and, to create that actually, yeah. and, it's yeah. and there exciting. is appetite now, um, uh, Johnny. We uh, so first of all, I wanted to say thank you to those that are watching this uh, this live. And Peel, uh, please feel free to to ask your questions because for as much as uh, I have a I have a big list of questions for for Gautier, <laughs> uh, your questions are always very very welcome. Um, uh, so please feel free to just put them down here in the in the in the in the little chat that you see next to this uh, uh, to this video, uh, Johnny. There is appetite. We've seen the regional regionalization of independent watchmaking is one of the strong values that attracts collectors and uh, and uh, and watchmaking lovers around the world. So um, a genuine artist watchmaker uh, operating in his genuine place uh, is something that has a a, a, um, a, ch a charm a hundred percent yeah without a doubt we, we as we say how many times do we say this pietro about how do what is perceived to be the heart of watchmaking switzerland is no longer that's no longer the case because uh we've interviewed watchmakers from the united states in the last ep episode from uh Germany, from Sweden, from uh, all from over the, the UK, world. from the UK, the, from the UK, and uh, uh, and and even from Ireland. Go there. We have uh, uh, one or two fine examples here as well. And uh, I mean, more so, more than fine, more than fine, I would say. More than fine. But it's yeah. Well, they're Irish, so yes, obviously. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, but the, the point being that it is no longer a centralized. Uh, uh, hmm. craft or centralized industry that watchmaking, independent watchmaking, it could be happening in a small industrial estate pretty much anywhere or in a workshop of someone's uh, atelier it could, it could be anywhere and uh, the only thing I think that we find is that with watchmakers who are closer to that nucleus, uh, that it's easier to work with uh, to get uh, the, the skills and the uh, components, for example, if you want to <coughs> manufacture something, it's it, it, it's probably easier to do it with, where you've access to the, all the materials and the expertise. Of course. But uh, having said that, there are no boundaries now. People are are 
overcoming those challenges and we're seeing it all the time with uh, watchmaking in, uh, and beautiful watchmaking appearing everywhere like we're china australia singapore japan it's just it, it, it's it's no longer uh something that uh, that uh, it's exclusively swiss and nor does the word swiss made ne necessarily mean that's as good yeah. as it gets because no, that's 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 the other point actually is that uh, it, it's 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 not a proof yeah. of uh, of true swissness in the end so um, and you know what's what's happening i think is a, is a bit what happened uh maybe 25 years ago in, in the in the cuisine uh, part is that in the kitchen and uh, in the cooking uh, industry let's say is that you know for for many years the only cooking uh, that that made sense a high cooking was was the french one but of course and one of our of our retailer in the us told, told uh, that sentence to me and i think it makes sense saying you know in the end i, I don't care if i go to a you know peruvian restaurant owned by a japanese chef uh in germany if the food is great the food is great I, you know that's that's what matters in the end yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. it's good it's as, really um, a good thing yeah as as we go then through uh concretely what you're trying to express with your watchmaking and uh johnny thank you for preparing those images that we're gonna go through uh once again now there are some um, important pillars in uh, uh, the trilob offer uh, uh gautier what did you want to achieve when uh, uh structuring your collection and uh, in terms especially of innovation and the value that you wanted to give to collectors, can you talk us through the different collections and, uh, and choices that you've made along the way? Sure. So, so this is the, the, the movement part of the, of the Une Folle Journée, uh, of the Une Folle Journée collection or Crazy Day collection, the, the most um, crazy one. Um, <laughs> what's, what's always been the basis for us is that we've, we've always been saying that you can do super high and finishing great watchmaking in house but at that at a value that makes sense as well so that's that's always been uh very important for us it's it's always easy i would say to do something super complex super super expensive and super well made um but uh, the real challenge is to make something that makes sense at, at a price that makes sense as well um so that's 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 something important for us um uh all of these watches are, um, are of course showing time without hands that's that's another key pillar so we we have uh, i don't know maybe 20 years of creativity in the in the cardboard but um uh, none of them include hands uh so it will we have a lot of lot of things coming up in the future uh, none of them include hands because you, you know that it's like with the French cuisine, you can you can do cuisine in the French way, but you can do many many other ways. It's the same in watchmaking; you can use hands, but you can do many many different interpretation of time. Um, so that's our uh, that's our um, fantastic. I don't time. know what uh, you mean when you say the French cuisine was supposed to be the best in the world. I don't understand that, but anyway, carry on, carry on. <laughs> I can't comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I would. Have, I can argue with Pietro. I'm not sure with you, Jim. <laughs> but the beer, but the beer. Um, and so, so here you have an illustration of, 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 of what we do in the sense that um, we can do some really exuberant stuff or eccentric, and here something that looks extremely classic in a way and yet at the same time very very different so so for for everybody time shown here which show three the pointer on, on the top and 15 minutes and we we do not indicate precisely the seconds because it's uh it's not important contrast is a big thing uh, uh gautier yes. to make sure more more. Uh, that a, tri a trilobe is understood yeah 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 uh, you mean in in the in the color the contrast yeah contrast in a way you obviously show um the the the, the workings the mechanics in the in the yeah. full journey for example the see-through and then how you yes. overimpose the indication of the time itself in hours yes. minutes and seconds yes yes and then and, and wait for the for the next ones absolutely there is so the broom that you just showed the nf broom yeah. the new fantastic yeah. broom 
so we had a client this week, obviously uh, wanted to acquire one. But when we said to him that, you know, there's probably eight months waiting on one of those, um, where are you in terms of how many pieces you can produce and uh, the real capacity and the, the, the waiting times at the moment? Uh, that's the challenging part, I would say. Um, because we the, the, something very important for us is that we do not want to appear in that corner of, uh, you know, uh, being arrogant, uh, telling people, ah, you have to wait many months. What, what we want is to to produce the right number, not, not too much, of course, uh, but uh, satisfy the client. And, and to me, have the client wait too long is, 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 not, is not our goal, of course. Uh, so we are, we're working on that. We have uh, taken um, uh, many strategic decisions that, who, that, that you know, each month we, we start to see the results and, uh, in, and, and so that uh, it will help us reduce that, uh, that lead time. Uh, Definitely in the, the next okay, uh, so six to six to twelve months, we 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 hope to be back to normal. So I can try to have another chat with your team then. <laughs> <to> that <laughs> now, how, how many watches are you are you planning to make? Can you can you say how many, or is something that you prefer to keep uh, confidential? No, no. This this year we'd like to do if if we produce if we're very optimistic on the production side, we'll do between six to 700 pieces, I would say. Wow. Yeah. That's so a, droplet is in, a yeah. droplet in the sea compared to our friends from Rolex or Cartier. Uh, but for us, of course, it's, it's a challenge to, to, to get that because it's, um, it's a whole logistic, uh, um, yeah, it's a whole logistical challenge. Uh, it's all about we scalability. Would not, we, would not, we would not please everybody uh, doing that. So, it's, it, that would not yeah. be enough, but we don't want to do too much either. So, exactly, exactly. It's about mm -hmm. scaling the, 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 the business and the, the company and production in a way that is organic and that is something Correct. that you can, uh, that you can cope with, that you don't become overwhelmed by the logistics of trying no. to. Uh, it, you know, so, and that's, and, that's always a danger, of course. Uh, we yeah, have to be quite, quite careful on that. Yeah, and I think you have to be able to enjoy your business as well. And uh, if you're constantly under pressure and under stress, you know, it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it removes a lot of that joy. And that's I think fun. just even looking at the image here of the new fantastic uh, grain blue, there is a joy about the these watches that is... You know, as you said Thank a few you. minutes ago, Gautier, you know, it's instantly recognizable from from 50 meters away. Uh, you yes. see a three loba, you know, you it couldn't be you know anything it. else, you know. And uh, I, I was going on that point, John, it's very interesting. I was going to ask uh, um, uh, Gautier, I would I can tell you what I see from my perspective because being a three loba official retailers, we've been blessed with some good sales over the a year or so that we've been partners. Um, but what would you say is the reason uh, why people got so hooked by Trilob and why why are people investing on a Trilob? Uh, from your perspective, what do you see? Well, I think that the first appeal is, as, as, as Johnny said, is the, is the, is the look, it's the, the, you know, it's straight away, straight away you, you, you hate it or you love it, of course. Uh, but it's it's something super super different and and that that you know that that hooks up people that's for sure and this one is, is for example very good it's, it's a good example for us it's it's a new fantastic secret watch uh which is which is very very much how we we conceive what true personalization is about what true luxury is about because here uh each each of our clients will choose a date, a time, and a location of, of an important moment of her life or his life. So a wedding, a birthday, uh, uh, crossing uh, of the ocean, uh, sailing, or what, you know, an important moment. And we will put the starry sky of this exact moment of their life on the dial. So each, each watch will be unique in the world. Uh, each watch will have its, its own story. And, and and we call this watch secret because if you don't tell the story behind it, nobody will know. And, and for us, it's really 
Yeah, that, that's really how I envision luxury. It's a luxury for yourself, not not for others. And we have we have uh, witnessed that firsthand because we were lucky enough to uh, uh, to customize a couple of these pieces for yeah, for a absolutely. couple of our collectors and the dates. The dates they proposed were obviously compelling, uh, uh, important uh, personal dates, yes. and uh, and when... sometimes you don't, we do, we don't know what's behind the date. We don't have to know, yeah. uh, but uh, and we had we yes. had cool stories of uh, you know uh, a person who climbed the K2 in Pakistan for the first time, uh, uh, you know, cool moments of life. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, and historically in a way. Um, yeah. yeah, so if I was going to say from our perspective, what we've seen in the eyes of the collectors uh, uh, preferring Trilobe uh, is uh, is the um, the look, the flair, I would say the flair. Mm. There's a clear flair there coming from your identity and from your style and the way you intend things as a, you know, as a, as a creative mind behind. And uh, secondly is the value. Mm. And uh, Johnny may help me here, but with a proprietary movement called the Eccentric, uh, uh, with the level of finishing that we can all appreciate, we've seen it there very well. Yeah, this image is uh, is speaks for itself. Mm. And um, at the price point, uh, if you if you're not familiar with the price point, you can go on the limited edition and see the full listing of Trilobe uh, Trilobe uh, timepieces. Uh, so the combination between flair and value, Johnny, is normally a, a winning recipe, isn't it? Well, tell it, Joe. The proposition is uh, exceptional. It really is because we have, a, as, we, as we mentioned, a proprietary uh, movement that is uh, the, the 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 foundation on which the the, the brand has been able to develop its uh, three key uh, uh, collections: the uh, the Folle uh, Folle Journée, the Nuit Fantastique, and uh, Martinique, and um, they're accessible. They're they look like watches that sometimes you would see that might have uh, might, might be twice as expensive. And uh, so I'm just trying to call up the prices here. Just I uh, um uh, uh, but but I I know that they're um, uh, represent extraordinary uh, value for money. Um, mm. I can I can quickly share also the Thank you. <laughs> my, sc my screen, uh, Johnny, and uh, just uh, give uh, yeah uh, you maybe yeah here we go. So this is the this is the um, we're going to actually launch uh, Gautier a new version of, of our web website. It's going to come out soon, and uh, we'll have the opportunity to even better illustrate uh, the trial of collection, which is. Okay few models but basically three or four main collections that you can find them here but basically yeah we trial up in uk money you start at seven seven thousand nearly eight thousand uh, pounds which is uh you know for what we have just described and seen is definitely what i would describe as uh, as great value so uh yeah if you want to explore everything is on the, on the limited edition what is the achievement you are the proudest of uh Gautier so far in the journey Oh, deep question. Um, no, I would say I would say it's it's, it's a mix of, of a lot of things, you know. But uh, mostly, you know, creating this whole team. Um, you know, from from the beginning, I've never wanted the the name of the brand to be my name, uh, because again, uh, you cannot build a brand by yourself. You need, you need people. Um, that, that that work a lot, and uh, and and you know that's why I choose the name Trilob because it, it has an architectural meaning, but it's also an umbrella under which each and every person working at this company can identify and can be proud of. They they you know cannot be proud of being Gautier, but they can be proud of uh, being uh, being the true part of Trilob. And and you know gathering these uh, these talents is is something uh, is something exceptional. Is, is watchmaking the way that makes you express your admiration for art and beauty, or is it the uh, the other way around? It's like you use art and beauty to enhance uh, watchmaking, which is more of of your passion. So one of the two. Uh, sorry, maybe a bit of a complex. Uh, a, but when a, I, bit of, we have to... a bit of both, I would say. Uh, a bit and of it both. Depends yeah. of the of the products, and and you you'll see. Um, 
some crazy product in the future as well in the future sorry um that that will more come from art to watchmaking than from watchmaking to art i would say so it's a, it's it's a mix and it will depend on the collection so that's a genius but it's uh, very suggestion. it's very much interlinked Genius suggestion because we had uh, we had an, a question from our actually the same question repeated from a few collectors that when I said we were going to interview you through our uh, poll on Instagram they uh, share with us the question the main question which is what's happening next with Trilob uh, uh, can you give us any preview of uh, what could or could happen at Watches and Wonders or later on this yeah. year? Yeah, that's, yeah, of course. So one thing which is very important for us is also um, not to fall into um, that race towards uh, novelties, you know, that, that has been imposed of our big brands, uh, some small as well, that, you know, every six months you need to have a novelty and so on. And for us, that's, that's one thing we're very um, cautious with because uh, we strongly believe that it takes time to you know try to we we have the ambition to make some icons with our watches and 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 to have a watch become an icon that takes time and we don't want to you know cannibalize or jeopardize that by you know having too many collections that yeah that, and be and being honest as insiders we very well know that the risk when the markets become saturated or brands become saturated, mm. the only way for brands to generate business is to keep launching new stuff to, mm. to, to compel, you know, to push clients to think, oh, I need to have that one, that one, that one. And this happens when there is no reassortment yeah. on, uh, on collections that already exist. Uh, it's good to see that Trilobi is not, you can still quite leverage quite a lot on the existing collections. Yes, that's very important for us, and and that's why we've never been doing uh, much, um, you know, collabs. Uh, we try to be very cautious on that. Uh, we did, uh, we did, of course, one with uh, with the Dubai Watch Club a few years ago. One with Hadinki, one with uh, Grail Watch. Um, we we don't want to do, um, you know, we could do fifty collaborations per year. Uh, that would be. We, we with all respect for the others, the Grail watch was uh, uh, was absolutely amazing. It's a, I've, it's I've a cool, it. it's a very cool one. Um, and uh, I saw one on the wrist of a, of a client in, uh, in, uh, in Hong Kong a few months ago. Super proud to, to see that on, on his wrist. Um, and, and you know, it's it's it, it on the short term vision, it's it's good money because it's good money, you know, it comes. Um, it's visibility and so on, but in, on the long run, and because we have this ambition to construct a house on the very long run, I don't think it's a good strategy. Um, it's, it's it's a short term vision that we 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 do not go into. That doesn't mean we we don't want to be creative and, and create uh, things with with people we like, but on on a very um, cautious basis. Uh, that being said, um, we have a boiling of creativity, um, so we'll have something. I think extremely cool, extremely nice uh, coming up at Watches and Wonders, and we'll have some more crazy stuff later on. And that's good to know uh, but because creativity we, is the easy part, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it comes natural. We are <laughs> planning to visit. We're, we're planning to visit uh, Watches and Wonders with with a number of collectors as well that will join us there. So, uh, if you are planning to go to on the on the booth, fantastic. And you let me know. You can be in our WhatsApp uh, trail, and I give you all the uh, instructions and directions for the for a great Watches and Wonders. Uh, uh, exhibition. You will be in the main uh, Carré des Horlogers uh, in the main That's exhibition, right. yes, this year as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. At the heart That's of brilliant. the show. That's brilliant. That's, That's a big development too. That's uh, a sign of the uh, the the brand, the, the, the ascent, if you like, of Trilobe uh, to to go from previously in the Beau Rivage Hotel to uh, the Carré des Horlogers. It's, oh, uh, it's a big step. Completely. No, no. Our, our, our first booth actually was um, 
we had uh, you know the Japanese kakemono and the table of uh, you know one meter large at uh, Basel World. Yes. Um, you know on the third floor, lost. Uh, <laughs> it was a, quite a complex spot, I would say, but it was super cool to be there actually. Um, 2018. 2018. 2018, absolutely, and uh, it's at that time it's uh, it's. Uh, French journalist based in Switzerland, Gregory Pons, who pushed us to go there, which was a super cool push from him. Um, and, and we're grateful to, to having been there at the time. Uh, and, uh, and now we are extremely happy, of course, to be part of Watchers yeah. and Wonders at the heart of the show. Um, and we'll have, I think, a cool booth this year as well. We, we, try, to be, part, we try to be creative on that side as well. Excellent. And part of your very, very humble approach, uh, Gauthier, you haven't even mentioned a big um, uh, milestone of winning the GPAG award as well, the Grand Prix de l'Orangerie, which was uh, yes. another massive, massive step. So credit uh, to that, uh, even going you. through, you know, the, a pandemic as well in such an early yeah. age of your venture was a big, big, uh, probably challenge to go through. Um, no, we, we had, um, when we launched the brand uh, five years ago, we had a super cool business plan where everybody, everything went from, you know, we had the yellow jackets in France, the strike, the COVID, uh, yes. perfect business planning. That, that was but a bit extreme, cool. but I, yeah, I, it, it was a bit extreme, but I find business plans very useful. You know why? Because you know that that's the only scenario that is not never going to happen. And so at least you know that. So Sweet. by exclusion, you, you know that. Out. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> and look, uh, we've had that at the limited edition so many times that we keep getting surprised. Uh, thank God every every year. But it's, a, it's an important um, exercise to do, I think. There is, um, yeah, because as a business, watchmaking will never be uh, something written in stone. You know, the creative part mm. and the obviously the moods of whatever goes around it are simply unpredictable in so many ways. But look at you now with watchmakers in Paris, uh, ready, nearly ready, already, already to host people to come and visit your atelier in Paris. How many watchmakers do you have, and is that something we can offer as well? Completely. Yeah, we are six uh, watchmakers, uh, so it's. Uh... It's cool. And more and more, we, 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 our, our philosophy is that we try to do more and more ourselves. So be it on the, of course, on the, on the creativity side, we do, we do everything in house. Um, the, the few times we try to challenge people outside, uh, the result was, um, particular, uh, so, Pecu so peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> peculiar, sorry, peculiar. So that no, no, no. We, <laughs> we do, we do in house. Uh, we create our content, we write our content, we shoot, we do our three D, our motion design. Uh, we have super, super talented team uh, there. Um, we invent stuff inside, in house, and uh, so it's it's an interesting place to to visit. It's on a it's on a two story um, building, oh, in the two last story of a building, and. Uh, um yeah it's 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 cool to visit so the limited edition collectors if you are uh, planning a nice weekend getaway in paris let us know we can help you organize something uh, really meaningful uh, because in a in a way and for as humble as uh, gautier may be in his approach basically watchmaking uh, artisan watchmaking is back in paris after a very long time yeah. and um, and triloba making a huge uh, contribution to that, um, I can't believe and we have good whiskey. Uh, good whiskey as well, which is uh, always a plus. Uh, you mentioned about the bread and the food, so yeah. What yeah, else I do you need? I can I can tell you now that Italy is also good at uh, rugby. I may also pay you a visit at one point, you know, for a rugby game. Now that I can sit comfortably with you next to me, you two, because I know you. you do so. <laughs> so I can't believe the best part of an hour. <laughs> He's gone. It's been an absolute pleasure, Gauthier. Um, thank you. So for those much that are watching, thank you. For those of you that are watching this on YouTube or listening to this uh, as we are going to start our podcast series very, very soon, a huge thank you. Don't hesitate to send us pictures, uh, sorry, pictures, uh, questions uh, if you want, because the best thing about the watchmakers we uh, invite and we host in this uh, humble show is that they're always open to receive and answer questions. Uh, they're the most uh, approachable uh, guys, as you can see here today with uh, with Gautier. So feel free to do that. 
Thank you, Gautier, for giving us some previews and some uh, ideas of what may may happen with Trilobe. And I can't wait to to host you again in London for an event or again on this uh, on this uh, on this show. And Johnny, thank you so much for preparing this interview uh, masterclass once again with all the images, videos, and uh, your contribution as well. Very enjoyable. Thank you to so do much. The so yeah. As I say, very enjoyable to do. And uh, Gauthier, it was uh, fantastic to uh, have this conversation with you this morning from Paris um, to look at the, the collections and uh, hear some of the stories about the journey so far. I'm sure Trilobe has a, a long way to go and uh, a bright future awaits, I'm pretty sure. So, so much. I think that's it, Pietro, from ourselves, is it? So... Um, <clears throat> All we can do is thank everyone for for tuning in. Don't forget to look, check out the, the limited edition uh, .co .uk and uh, to discover the the complete collection from Trilobe and uh, talk to Pietro or myself. We'd be delighted to help you uh, find one of these pieces for yourself. And uh, so we will be back again in a, a week's time, I guess, Pietro or or less. And, uh, absolutely there's there's okay. much more coming up and uh, Gautier thanks again enjoy Paris in the weekend it just sounds fantastic to us only the idea so yeah, yeah. and I'll see you very soon the rain. <laughs> <laughs> indeed thank you everyone take care guys take bye. care bye bye, -bye.